I'm joined here by my colleagues Emma Dragon, Carolyn Holstein, Jane Rich, and Alan Weinberg. This committee was appointed by the Select Board in July and has been tasked with the role of helping the athletes to do the historical Russell School buildings and to seek and secure funding for whatever decision is made. The structure has been neglected for way too long, and our goal is to ensure that timely decisions are made. We put together an electronic survey, which can be accessed at bit.ly slash Russell School Survey, and hard copies are available at Town Hall, the Library, and the Senior Center. The survey lays out several options for the future of the school, and we want to collect opinions from residents on what they believe should happen to the structure, as the school belongs to all of us and the Hadley's, and Hadley's future residents. The survey results will help determine which avenues to pursue. Before I pass the floor to Dan, who will walk you through the, the brief history of the building, I want to mention that we will look forward to questions at the end, but, but anyone is welcome to ask questions throughout the uh, presentation at the mic here. Or by raising your hand, please do. Thank you, Courtney. <laughs> And I would like to start by thanking, of course, uh, citizen, citizens of Hadley. Um, thank you for uh, logging on, tuning in, showing up at the meeting. Thanks to the select board for making this happen. Um, this is Stark Commission, of course, and uh, the Russell School Committee. Thank all of you at this table. Um, you know, the reason uh, I think we should be doing this is because, you know, we're, we're, we should be taking control of, of the important things in town that really belong to us. And in the future, we're not going to be around to do it. So hopefully we can take care of this now. And with that, I'll get on with my brief history. The Russell School building is located in <clears throat> in Saratown. It's an important part of Has Hadley Center Historic District. Uh, National Register of Historic Places reference number 1977-000185. Was originally built in 1894 as the fourth home of Hopkins Academy. After the previous building at that exact location burned down on December 14, 1893. At that time, the building committee was formed to deal with the new building plans while students were scattered throughout several buildings in town. The chairman of the committee was Horace Cook. Other members included George B. Smith, Charles Cook, Dr. Franklin Bonney, Henry C. West, John N. Pierce, H. C. Russell, and of course, Principal Thompson. The townspeople voted unanimously to erect the building knowing that they didn't have enough money and would have to borrow $3,000 from Hopkins Trust in order to pay for it. With the understanding that Hopkins Academy would lease the upper floor for a period of 20 years. Plans drawn by architect Charles E. Parks of Boston were approved in April and the building was complete in December. At the dedication ceremony, a reporter from the Daily Hampshire Gazette <coughs> quoted Mr. Smith as saying, quote, the new school building, as it stands today, is one of the most perfect buildings of its kind in the Connecticut Valley. It's a credit to the town and the surrounding towns. And not a murmur is heard from one citizen against paying the $17,177.09 which it cost. As it turned out, Hopkins uh, was able to relocate to a new, new facility before their 20 years was up. And the building was named, renamed Russell School in 1909. <clears throat> it was then used as an elementary school until 1996 when the new Hadley Elementary School was built on River Drive. During this time between 1909 and 1996, few upgrades were made, mostly to the heating plants, because the bulk of the building was constructed of the most durable and sustainable materials and with the highest level of craftsmanship. <clears throat> However, toward the end of the 20th century and early 2000s, measures were taken to ensure that the building would be safe and usable for a few more years without major renovation. Electrical updates were carried on as an, on an as, uh, carried out on an as-needed basis. Excuse me. Sorry. 
uh, the historic bell was removed from the tower. The tower was reinforced from below. Roof repair maintenance was performed, and the chimney was repaired and sealed up. These things happened during a time when the town's maintenance budgets were level funded and stretched, if not completely eliminated. In 2012, town meeting appropriated $38,000 for historic commission to evaluate three of town's historic buildings. Then in 2014, select board appointed a municipal building committee to develop and present a viable plan to restore, preserve one or more municipal buildings or recommend construction of new buildings. With that, the MBC got right to work. The charter school tenants who failed to perform any maintenance in the building were promptly evicted. The telltale gauges were installed to measure any possible movement of the foundation at Russell School were installed. And before too long, a myriad of upgrades and renovations were completed on other existing municipal structures and plans for new buildings were developed, but not without devastating consequence. The North Hadley Village Hall was sold. The Hooker School was demolished. The Russell School stands and is waiting for its proud owners to make sure that it is there for future residents of Hadley to use to celebrate the town's 400 year anniversary of 2059 and beyond. Now, I've been monitoring those telltale gauges. There has been very little movement, if any, in most areas. Some are broken off. You don't know if it's from vandalism or it's actually so much movement that it broke the telltale gauge. But all in all, what is that? The telltale gauge is a small device put on the building to measure movement of the foundation. Um, we'll see it. There are some pictures that will come up in the slides. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as I walked around taking a bunch of these pictures, um, you know, it's it, amazing how strong this building is. It is, there are no squeaks in the floor like, like Thorns Market in Northampton or other big structures like this. It's solid. Um, it was designed so that uh, much of the sound and noise wouldn't transfer from room to room or floor to floor. Um, the, the building reports that I have here clearly state that there's no deflection in the roof rafters. This building is still very strong. There is deterioration and it will rapidly increase and get more costly to fix if we don't take care of it now. But all in all, you know, thanks to people like Gary Berg, who with very little to no budget have kept good care of this building, done a great job making sure that it's still strong and there's plenty of time to take care of this now. And with that, I will hand it off to Alan Weinberg. Can everyone hear me okay? So uh, one of the things that we're doing is to try to uh, get public input, um, also inform people of what, what we're doing, what the uh, possibilities are with the building. But the first step, um, that we're taking is to uh, do a community survey to uh, um, find out what people think or what level of support there might be for various options that we've identified going forward. Now there's a myriad of things that the building could be used for. There's, I have a list and I'm sure everybody's got an idea of what the building could be used for, both publicly and privately. Okay? But, uh, we, you could combine, in general, the general um, uh, options for, for proceeding can be combined into several larger options of ownership and control. And the survey, which is summarized up there, the main parts of the community survey are asking people um, how much they would be willing to support various options. Now, they're not usually exclusive. People can support more than one option because we're just trying to find out which ones make sense to, to pursue. Um, the first question is how important is it to you to preserve the Russell School buildings? That's a general question. Um, and there are three answers. It's very, very important, somewhat important, or not important. Those are the three uh, options. And then we get into the meat of the survey, which is what's the level of support for the following options. And they are basically to retain and renovate the building for town use. So that would be town offices, 
uh, school offices, some kind of uh, town or municipal use. And that would be the most expensive option uh, because uh, for the number of reasons. One is um, if the town um, renovates and rehabs that building, because we're a municipality, you would have to uh, uh, pay prevailing wages. And that's what was extremely expensive as many of the projects in town are because of that requirement. If you're a private developer, you don't necessarily um, have to uh, uh, pay prevailing wages. So that's why some of those uh, private and nonprofit uh, options can be cheaper. Or the first one would be to retain uh, for town use. Um, it's a high cost, uh, prevailing wage requirement. Now it is eligible for preservation funding from the state or wherever you can find uh, funding options and primarily from the Community Preservation Act um, for, some, for some of the um, costs. <coughs> And then if the town did uh, retain it for use, it would, it would obviously have to maintain it. And it would be operating costs. So the, the figures that uh, we have looked at um, from the various reports, uh, if it was converted to the, to a town hall, to the town hall, that's one of the options that was looked at in one of the reports. Um, that would, that would, in 2019, that was upwards of $16 million to do that. And that's without seismic upgrades, which might or might not be required, depending on the use of the building. So that's option one. <clears throat> the second option is to stabilize the building um, using CPA funds. The intent here would be to um, prevent further deterioration and water intrusion uh, of the exterior of the building. It wouldn't mean fixing everything inside the building, just to keep it standing. Um, uh, in, indefinitely, really, um, while other options to rehab and repurpose the building are pursued. Because it's important, as uh, Dan mentioned, um, the building is sturdy, it's strong, but it's deteriorating, and the longer the uh, wait, the harder it's going to be to keep it standing. And that's what we, we, we believe as a committee. Uh, and the Municipal Building Committee also, I believe, uh, feels that uh, we should seriously, the town should seriously consider uh, investing CPA money uh, into stabilizing the exterior of the building. Obviously that would have to be approved by the Community Preservation Committee and the town, and town meeting. But we think it's an important thing to, to think about. Uh, it, what that would primarily involve would be, and there's several elements that, that need to be done. The most important probably is, is the foundation and the drainage that's affecting the uh, parts of the building. The building's not sinking, but it is settling in places because the granite wall, the foundation, uh, is, is separating because of uh, uh, mainly water getting into the buildings, especially at the corners of the buildings and where the, the stairs are, the porticos. So, so um, uh, Taking care of that uh, issue, which involves uh, doing some grading, perhaps some retaining walls, um, especially on the uh, western side of the building where the land dips away from the building, and then um, uh, fixing the granite wall, the granite blocks, basically grouting and repointing the granite blocks. Um, so that's one element. The other one is the, the brick work on the side of the building uh, needs to be repointed. Uh, because that's deteriorating. And then there's a question about the drainage from the roof, the gutters, and, and directing the water so away from the building. And then there's a question of the roof itself. Uh, we've been repairing the roof, sort of on a band-aid approach. Um, what we're hearing from Gary and other people is that it's, it's, point, it's getting to the point where you, it's very difficult to even get somebody up there on the slate roof to keep repairing um, the roof. And it's not the slates that are actually deteriorating, it's the underlayment, the nails that are holding the slates, the flashing. So we're probably at the point where the whole roof is, should be replaced. 
And then the cut question is, is uh, do you replace it with slate, do you replace it with an asphalt roof, do you replace it with a metal roof? And those, um, depending on what you choose, that will make the price. Uh, the asphalt is obviously cheaper, as slate is the most expensive, metals in the middle. Um, but if you take all those costs, if you did all those items, um, and of course the cost figures are somewhat in flux because of inflation and supply chain issues that we're going through now, and um, just normal uh, escalation costs. But if we take the 2019 figures and, and uh, um, escalate it by 30 or 40 percent, then you're talking about $2 million to do all those things. Now, that, don't take that figure to the bank because it would depend on actually going up to bid and doing some further investing, uh, updating of the, of the figures. But I think it's a reasonable figure, somewhere between one and a half and two million dollars to do exterior stabilization of the building to keep it standing for some period of time while we figure out what the building can be used for and how. Okay, so the next thing in the survey is basically is leasing it. We can lease it to a nonprofit or we can lease it to a private entity. And the uses could be okay on this case. Um, or it could be a variety of uses, retail, offices, a museum, a visitor center, housing or mixed use. Uh, they would need to put a reservation restriction in place to protect the town's interest. Uh, the owner of the lessee could apply for CPA, state and federal grants and tax incentives. The town might receive some revenue from, from uh, the lease or the sale. Uh, we would no longer own it if it's if we, uh, we sold it. We would no longer own it. We would lease it, we would. But if we sold it, um, we would need to think about putting in some kind of provisions to the sale so that if the building ever uh, were destroyed by fire or something like that and could not be rebuilt, then the town would have to, could have to provide those where we would not we would get the land back at least. And I know that's a concern that I've heard where the town doesn't want to sell the building because the property is so valuable. And that's why I don't disagree with that. So there may be ways to consider doing doing a sale with devices to protect the town's interests. That's all that had to be worked out and negotiated. So the next, uh, I guess I'm combining leasing and sale. And, sale. Um, and then the, the last uh, option, uh, the last category is demolishing the building. If none of these things work out, or if the town decides it's not doesn't want the building to to be part of our history and heritage and future. Um, if it decides that it's just too much trouble uh, then uh, to uh, do anything with the building, it doesn't want to spend the best of time and money to keep it up and keeping it in some kind of productive use, then the other, the, the final option would be to demolish the building. Um, and we could either demolish the building and keep the property for some town use of a park or parking uh, or to sell a property. So those are the uh, those are the options in the survey that we're asking people to let us know what they think um, and how much they would support any of those options. I think that covers my uh, my, my section. If there's any questions, we can have and save them later. And now I'd like to turn it over to who's the next person? Yeah, uh, Dragon. Yeah, I think it's me. It, so it next. With creating this and developing this survey, we did identify some um, issues and challenges with the different plans that we could move forward for. Um, certainly, what are the building code requirements? Are there maybe historical grandfathering in proposals that this would cover? Maybe not. Certainly zoning and planning, with it being so close to Route 9 and the limited amount of parking in that area. And certainly also it's um, approximately proximity to Middle Street as well. Um, parking, right? Parking has always been an issue in, in kind of the center of town, but certainly, and I think we experienced that too with the development of our library and the senior center here. 
um, that parking was certainly an uh, issue. So what would that be? Um, how would we make it ADA compliant? And what would be the venture in that uh, to make it accessible for all? Because that's important. Um, preservation restriction terms. And then also, what would be the terms of sale or lease in terms of agreeing to a private entity? Because um, one of the things that I think is in shared value with everyone who is here physically in this meeting and presentation with us, but also virtually, um, is that we want to preserve Russell School um, and its beauty and how magnificent it is and its physical structure. Um, so making sure that if we did end up, up as a town to sell it, um, that the people who would take that over would, would appreciate it that much as well. Um, so next um, is, I'm going to turn it over to Carolyn. Hi, I'm Carolyn. Yeah. It's all right. Yes, the people on the web are I'm Carolyn Goldstein, a member of this committee. Um, I'm the newest one in the block here. Um, but I've driven by that building many, many years, as you all have too. And just adored it. And I've uh, just seen pictures of the inside and the students who used to be here. It's just incredible. So our uh, what my little paper says here, what we're going to do after we have this uh, forum and we'll continue to keep gathering up survey results. So uh, come January, that will be the deadline. So if you haven't filled out the survey, please do. We have copies in the back there. Um, the committee will review those uh, results. So far, we have five over 500 people have filled in this survey, which is very, very impressive. So that tells you that people like it, or I don't know if they like it, but they, they're very interested in that building. Uh, so then we'll make up a little report and go to the select board and uh, tell them what the survey results were and, and be there to answer any questions. Alan and, um, um, well, many, most of us know about, pretty much about this building now. And we'll continue to get public input. Um, if you know anybody that has some opinions they want to tell us, please let them know that we're available. Um, and we're going to continue to explore uh, partnerships opportunities, as Alan was talking about, that um, if the, the survey results show that um, people want to have public-private connections, then we will continue to, support, um, to look into that. We're also going to look into more than just con Community Preservation Act funding. Um, right now, the CPA funds are pretty flush, so we're, we want to look into that. But there's the Valley CDC and Mass Historical Commission that um, uh, give grants, and so um, I'll probably be the one writing those grants. I'm pretty good at it. Um, and we'll continue to look into that. And we're going to request a CPA funding for the exterior stabilization. And that's the main thing. We want to get it stable first. Um, we're going to talk about whether we should do that uh, in the spring. So we're open for questions now. Anybody have any comments, questions? Did anyone go to the school besides Beth here? Oh, that's great. Uh, you guys are too young. Any other, any questions? Yeah? Other than, well, what is historical about the building? Did George Washington sleep there? Did yeah, didn't you know? Did Abraham Lincoln give a speech? From the front steps, uh, did Calvin Coolidge stop by on his way home and visit the building? So, uh, other than it just being a structure, what is historical about it? Given that it was put up in 1894, which makes it 128 years old, uh, what's historical about it? So, actually, this picture. Um, 
was taken and 1909 commemorate it that was taken at the 250th celebration of the town's anniversary and uh i think that's president mckinley on the on the uh oh, up there up there yeah mm -hmm. uh the uh, i mean the depend uh, I guess it's, 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 I guess you, if you say it has to be have a George Washington's presence, that would make it uh, 400 years in the past. Well, you're wondering why it's so special. That's not my question. So yep. My question is, what makes it any different than my grandfather's tobacco barn down the street, which was probably put up at the turn of the century? Well, the architecture, it's, the, that building and Goodwin are town buildings that are unique. Um, that, well, the town hall is special, too. But they, these, are, these represent the history of the town, okay? And they are, um, the architecture is considered very handsome and unique, okay? And um, uh, the, the buildings in the town center, the town center itself, is a historic district. It's considered a historic district, okay? It's on the National Register. And, and even though the town, the town center only dates back to the early 19th century, because before that, it was on West Street. So um, it's historic only until 18, the 1890s, true. But it's nevertheless, I think, um, I think most Historians would agree, and, and uh, the Historic Commission would agree that this is a historic building, and a special one, not just, not just an old building. It's a special building with unique uh, architecture, and unique history, and it's, and, and it's in the town center. It defines the town center. <laughs> Uh, I disagree. Well, the age of it, I, I, I have to disagree so, with that. I mean, obviously. I'm still, I'm still yeah. waiting for a, an answer as to why it's historical. You other didn't than, get an answer. You just don't agree with it. Yeah, you may. I, 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 yeah, no, I think I think the point's well taken. The point, the point, the point, the point's well taken. You know, it, it's. We have another question but, here. Yeah. I mean, I understand your point. I, I, I hear you. Uh, that it's not, it's not the oldest thing in town, for sure. But it's old enough for me, uh, and I think for people who, uh, like the National you know, Register and the Historic District, uh, at no time when we were doing this, when well, that wasn't me, it was Dorothy Russell, who was doing the, uh, uh, the registry, no one said, oh, that building's not old enough to be on a historic district. So, I mean, history is all, it's relative, obviously. I mean, your point's well taken, sir. So I, you know, I don't, dis I don't disagree with and what you're certainly saying. certainly not the first. It's yeah. not the first uh, home of Hopkins Academy. It's the fourth home of Hopkins Academy. <laughs> so your point is taken. Yeah. Uh, but it is, you know, the most handsome Hopkins Academy ever built. And it was, it was yeah. built, again, you know, because town voted for it unanimously, even though they knew they didn't have enough money and Hopkins Trust, the oldest operating, continually operating charitable trust in the country donated $3,000 to complete the building. That sort of makes it historic. Well, and special. It, and Hopkins Academy is the seventh oldest school well, in New England. It's uh, Hopkins Academy. The school is is what three hundred and. No, 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 no. Uh, my point is that may have been Hopkins Academy. That's Hopkins Academy now. So. Uh, Who is this guy? Who is that voice? Whiskey? 
Um, I also wanted to add yeah. that Hopkins is seeking uh, more space. Um, so this could potentially be an option to expand there. Um, they don't have any meeting spaces outside of classrooms. Um, and there's one teacher who is a floating teacher, so they don't have their own classroom that's um, specific to them. Um, and they also don't have a performance space. Um, they just use uh, the cafeteria. So expanding to that uh, could, could be an option as well. I doubt that the state of Massachusetts would re-accredit that building for anything educational. Okay, and because, uh, do you know why? Or? <laughs> because it's 128 years well, old. Well, uh -huh. of course it will. Really good it's, shape. It's first of yeah. all. Yeah, let's uh, keep it in good shape so it can be used. Yeah, the, obviously the, any use of that building, whether it's a school or whatever, is going to has it's not going to be an easy, uh, easy at all, or cheap, or quick. Um, there's challenges, as we mentioned, that have to be dealt with. Um, if it was easy and cheap, it would have been done already. So, uh, yeah, any, no matter what the use, use is, it's going to have some hurdles to jump through, for, for sure. I guess I'm... I guess I'm wondering is you've had quite an opportunity to ask some questions and for us to give answers that maybe may not have made you feel whole. Um, but I'm wondering if we should bring it maybe to our online people that are on Zoom in the forum, if they have any questions to open up the discussion and comment section further. Are we on Zoom? Nobody. There are folks on Zoom, but. I'm wondering if I maybe think... someone from the historical commission that's on might have some. Oh, oh. here comes Diana, I think. Oh, Di I'm Diana gonna West. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. There she is. So you're muted right now. OK, you're good. Is that... I'm Diana West. I'm the chairperson of the Hadley Historical and commission. commission. I believe the school, school is a might get this wrong. It's a freestanding masonry building. And so those are actually fairly rare in the United States. So that makes it unique. Uh, I will just reiterate what Dan said about the fact that the school was once home to Hopkins Academy, which the Hopkins Trust is the oldest continuous operating trust in the United States. So we have that historic aspect of it. I think it's an important part of our town center, which as and pointed out as part of a national historic district. And yeah. overall, this will take a lot of work if we wanna save this building. And I am fully in support of saving the building even if it doesn't remain under town ownership because it's, it's existed within all of our living memories. It's always been there. And I mean, if we wanna get into the argument also about tobacco barns, I would say they are just as important. They're part of our landscape. Uh, one time I drove down Route 47 and I think I counted upwards of 90 tobacco barns just on that one stretch within town. So I think the point of the historic mission is to work to preserve our historic landscape, which overall is threatened. Uh, our cultural landscape especially is on the endangered list of threatened cultural landscapes. And uh, I think this is a great opportunity for us to discuss what our options are. And hopefully, uh, I, I look forward to what the survey results say, 500 people already, that's absolutely fantastic. And uh, hopefully we can come to a good consensus about how we can save this building. Thank you. Thanks, Diana. I think it might be a good idea to at least state uh, from which camp we all sit. And I know from my point of view and how I feel is that um, I'm of the camp that says we, the town should always own that building. Um, we own three of the four corners on the building. The fourth one is privately owned by a resident who has owned that property for hundreds of years. And it's still in his family, it's gonna be in his family. Um, the, you know, this corner 
um, with the building on it. Um, if we lose it, we lose that access road to Hopkins Academy, um, which I don't, I'm not sure a private developer would, would, would be willing to share that access road to Hopkins Academy, which we've had uh, luxurious use of uh, for all these years, and we would miss it. Um, I think the town, you know, speaking with town administrator recently, uh, she said to me, town hall was packed the other day. We had to share spaces and share desktops and we were all over each other. We had visiting uh, people from other jurisdictions and other places and there was lots of visitors and they were all sharing space and we just didn't have enough room. And, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a given that, that eventually they could use that space. Um, I think that uh, uh, as of late, uh, Park and Rec has been doing a really great job. Thank you. And they've been doing it without facilities since the North Hadley Village Hall was sold. Uh, they don't have a place to work out of. And they've been in one single little office in the corner of Town Hall. Really friendly staff, happy to see you. The first person you see when you walk in the building. Really nice people, really doing a great job, really deserve their own space. So at the very least, they could have space in that building. Um, you know, town will always need more space. Um, when I joined the Municipal Building Committee in 2014, you know, that it was all about safety first. We needed a fire station to replace North Hadley Hall. We needed a senior center to take care of our seniors who really deserve to be well cared for. And, you know, so the library threw the monkey wrench in and, and but they could get grant money and it was $3 million off, a great deal. So as a building committee member, I thought, I don't care if it ends up a library, we need building space and we need usable building space. We don't need old clunkers that we can't use. We need new stuff. We need safe, compatible, usable structures. And since then we put up these three new buildings and boy, the town has room to breathe now. And now that we have this more space and come to find out we still don't have enough space. It doesn't make any sense for me uh, for the town to divest of this property at all. It just makes sense to save the property, you know, put a little bit of money at a time into it, a million dollars, a million and a half dollars every year, every other year, whatever we can afford from CPA or grants or whatever stabilize the structure <clears throat> right now it's vacant but don't think the town doesn't get use out of it i went in there took a bunch of pictures gary's using the open space to you know uh store things uh create projects he's got carpentry projects he has to build things for town or some say he's doing something prep for a parade or whatever boy it's been rented out to mass dock while they were doing their construction on route nine it's a usable space it's a strong and, and, and uh, you know, building with, with the potential to last for thousands of years. Um, as, as um, you know, my daughter, Hopkins Academy student, went on a European trip to Paris and London where those students visited unreinforced masonry, unreinforced masonry structures that are thousands of years old. And for her to come home to her hometown and, you know, what, have her town demolished this beautiful historic building? What incentive does that give her that it's worth doing anything? It doesn't make any sense. We should be saving this building and we should be using it. So, you know, other people on the committee are not from the same camp. They say save the building at any cost, even if you have to sell it to a private entity. And well, I can appreciate that. That's not where I stand. And I, you know, that's, that's fine with me. If the building, you know, is saved, I'll be happy with that. It, you know, that's good enough for me. I, I, if the town makes the decision, that's the most important thing, that the citizens who actually own the building and pay the taxes. You know, an American citizen, I pay taxes. I do it out of obligation and duty. And above and beyond that, I feel it's my duty an obligation to protect and preserve our history and heritage. I do see that we have yeah. 
someone on Zoom, I think. Denise, I think you're up. Hello. <laughs> I want to thank the committee for doing such a great job um, of putting together this thorough presentation and really doing their homework um, and getting a survey out there. I think this is really exciting. Um, I am also a member of the Hadley Historical Commission um, and full disclosure would love to see this building saved fully and used. And I was wondering um, if you guys have had better luck than the Historical Commission has at finding grant opportunities to either bring the building um, to a stabilized point or to bring it all the way back. Um, and if you've spoken with the town treasurer about options for funding this um, beyond CPA since um, CPA has a good amount of money, but certainly not enough. Uh, not yet. I mean, we've put in some inquiries um, to some funders. We haven't gotten answers yet, um, but I think the plan is to sort of narrow down the survey options uh, for the best two or three and then figure out what to, where to go from there. Well, we have, I mean, uh, one of these, these applications for CPA money uh, were from last year or the year before, and they were put forward to the select board um, uh, to apply for CPA money for some building stabilization by the Municipal Building Committee. Um, these were never put on the, on the warrant. Um, They never I, went to the CPA committee. They this, they were they never got that far. I know. Um, it's been a, a, a bad habit of town, and you know, to not let any of these uh, applications or articles, you know, get to the warrant to give the town uh, the choice. Um, I know the historic commission went to select board to. Um, apply for a local historic district and that was shot down because select board didn't want to give a five or seven person committee complete control over what happens to that property well now that's the select board a five person committee dictating that the town can't have a choice <laughs> so it's it's a little wow. uh, ironic but I think that's I think times. town meeting is would be the bottom line. Town meeting is the bottom line yeah. and, and, and none of these things got, got that far. Well that's I mean why that's why this committee was formed right. to to right. look into this particular building. And um, I think all our goals were to stabilize the building. I think we all were in agreement with that. That this is our number one priority. Yeah, and, and, but it, and part of the part of this whole effort is to gauge what public support there might be because right. Uh, that's if, right. And that's if we if the survey comes back and ninety percent of the people say knock it down, we don't support stabilizing it. Well, that's what we should deal with because it's a town decision. I mean, we we can, we can advocate, we can uh, investigate, we can try to you know do the pros and cons, but ultimately. It's the town, the town's decision, and the town's represented by the select board and town meeting. So we can advise them, we can work with them, and uh, um, I think you know the select board is told as you know when we've our conversations with the select board is do the public survey, get some public input, then come back and, and we'll figure out what we're going to do in the spring as far as a number of things. But probably the most important is whether we want to stabilize the building. In the interim, so. I just have a question about the uh, timeline. So, if the, the survey is done in Jan January, you'll tabulate the results mm -hmm. and present to the select board. And then, what's the deadline for getting something on the warrant for the May meeting? Well, actually, we have to go to the CPC committee first. So, whatever their deadline is, I don't think they set it yet for the. It'll probably, probably be sometime in January. January, February. Yeah. And that goal is to bring something to town meeting. Yeah. That's, That's our thinking. We're hoping. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. You never know. I see, I see two people with hands raised in our room.
There we go. I put in the wrong one. Um, yeah, so I was just going to uh, suggest in terms of the, the dialogue with the select board, uh, you know, obviously the select board composition can change over time with any of the elected um, <clears throat> committees in town. Um, but I think one of the things that consistently the board um, that we haven't done a very good job at is making sure that any committees that are formed, it's number one, very clear what the mission is of the committee. And then number two, what the reporting of that committee will be. Um, and I think that's something that um, I know there's been some recent conversation um, about that, that that's an area of improvement for us. So I would just suggest that maybe a way to make sure, um, I'll call it whatever, call it the disappointment that you experienced previously um, with the select board, you know, maybe um, managing up, if you will, and making sure that when this survey closes come January, that um, maybe you could ask for an audience with the select board to be really crystal clear on what the next steps are before the outcome is even known, um, so that that way there's a clear path forward. I think that was our understanding. Um, Denise, do you have something else to add? Yeah, I um, I just wanted to reiterate um, my support of speaking with the town treasurer and kind of because she's pretty much the smartest person I've ever met um, and talking with her about um, what the tax rate would actually look like if we were to bring this building up to speed because it might not actually be as scary as we think. We don't really know. And I think that people would want to know that um, and I think that if um, the treasurer has time to do that at some point, it might be uh, worth it for us all to know. And I also think it would make us more eligible for grant funding because we've run into problems where we're not eligible for grants because they're not seeing enough tax money going toward that building to begin with. Thank you. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Thank you. Oh, She's still on. Who, Molly? Yeah. No, yeah. not Molly. Denise? Denise, Denise. yeah. She's still listening. Uh, Denise, where are you? <laughs> She's right in the middle. Carolyn has a question for Denise. Hi. Now I forget it. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, so even though, I mean, this questionnaire was just what, how people felt about it, um, why do you think that we would have some advantages in, in restoring the, the, some money, some financial advantages that we didn't have before. And that we might have some extra stuff, extra bang for the buck by going through the treasure. Sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. I, what I was thinking was that it's just hard for people to have a full picture of all of the options if they don't know how much their tax um, rate is going to change. Um, and that that might be a benefit because possibly that that number won't be that big. I don't really know, though. I'm not the treasurer. Clear that, that there's two different um, questions here. As far as stabilization of the building using CPA money goes, that doesn't involve additional tax dollars. Those are tax dollars that already are earmarked. We wouldn't have to, we, it wouldn't be a question of figuring out, you know, going to a override or anything like that. That money is, is within the purview of the CPA already, or, or, or I, I'm not saying the money for stabilization, but m CPA money for whatever use. It's not part it, of our it's, tax. It's just, it, you know, dollars. when we spend CPA money, it doesn't raise the tax rate, okay? But if we were to spend $16 million on the building to rehab it up to some kind of use for the town, uh, much of that wouldn't be eligible for CPA. So, in, so if, if it, and I'm sure much, much of it would have to be funded by uh, the tax, by taxes. And I think maybe Denise is trying to get it that if we rehab the building for town use, and it costs $16 million, how much would that raise the taxes? And that, I mean, that's- Well, that's in fact, most of the work that needs to be done 
to stabilize and save this building is eligible for CPA. And any uh, amount of retrofit or code compliance that needs to be done on the inside would be minimal because by building code, by the uh, existing building code, the IEBC, um, you can't change the inside of that building by more than 5% uh, uh, gravity loads, 10% uh, lateral loads. You really can't change the inside of the building very much, so you wouldn't be spending a lot of money on the inside. The doors in there are already 50 inches wide. You don't um, need to put in new doors for ADA. for handicap. Yeah. At the very most, you'd have to you'd have to spend some money to uh, erect an elevator tower that is constructed outside of the building blueprint and separate from the building. And there would be a, an expansion strip or threshold that would connect the two. And that's where you'd be you know spending some tax dollars. But most of the money that you need to stabilize. And, and, and do period detail restoration on the outside is already, the CPA will already take care of that. You don't need to do it all in one year. You can do, you know, a million dollars for a, a bunch of granite and pointing work. You can do $500,000 for roof, another uh, $350,000 mm -hmm. for gutters, all through CPA, not raising your taxes. And it will make that, you know, just doing the exterior uh, uh, upgrades uh, to, to, you know, and, and make the building last another 150 years without any maintenance. It's already built out of the most durable materials out there. Well, I think there would be a question about if, if we upgraded the inside to be up to whatever code it is for whatever use it is. And it all depends on the use. I mean, if it's, if it's a storage building, that's one thing. If it's an assembly building, well, I don't think it could be an assembly building because right. of the building code. A lot if of it's these, offices, it could be of offices. These, a lot of these, are, are, these questions are answered right here in the Ryan Helwig structural report, and they can tell you all of the percentages. It's a very quick, easy way. Right, but the specific costs for specific uses right. are and laid out in the DRA report, and that adds up to many millions of dollars right. for a town hall. Now, there are other uses that could be done in there uh, and maybe partial, maybe part of the building that might be less. That we don't, I don't think we have the answers to that quite yet. Um, but it would, it would, so it would depend if Parks and, for instance, if they wanted to upgrade and rehab the building for Parks and Rec, that would be one thing. But um, the only thing we have firm numbers on is the DRA uh, well, figures. I think our intention for tonight and our presentation tonight in this forum um, by the committee for uh, was to show our progress that we've made so far for our meetings, um, the survey that has gone out on how to access that survey, some pictures, um, maybe some of the contingency plans and pathways that this building could end up going. Um, but certainly this presentation um, wasn't meant to mean any end decisions or mm -hmm. anything like right. that. It's just a starting point yep. in a conversation. Um, but just to bring that back, so uh, just so people don't. Yeah, th thank, maybe thank feel you, Dragon. For, for, yeah, yeah th thank you. But it is it is good to have the conversation. That's why we're having these meetings, and to hear you know different ideas, different thoughts, different perspectives. And but to recognize that we're just starting out on this process. Um, there's yeah, plenty of so. different points of view amongst ourselves and within town. I'm sure we want to hear them all. We want to consider them all. We want to bring them to the town. So we have a lot of work to do for sure, but you know, we really appreciate any input that we're getting. And it's really important for people to fill out that survey so we get a good, a good and I think we're already got a pretty good um, number of people who are doing the survey, which indicates, as Carolyn mentioned, that there is a lot of interest in this. So we'll all keep plugging away and, and, uh, and reporting back to the select board in the spring. And speaking of select board, Molly, your hand is raised. Not sure if that's from before or not. <laughs> no, no, that's new. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, um, I, I want to support what Denise Barstow said. Um, I'm sorry, Denise Barstow, Mance. Um, <laughs> I'm still getting used to that. Um, but in terms of, you know, certainly I don't think anybody wants to waste the town treasurer's time with, you know, 
18 different scenarios and then she's spending all this time trying to figure out different ways to fund it. But one of the things that I've certainly experienced is that, um, you know, the more information earlier on, the better for everybody, because what happens is people just start speculating. And so, for example, just this conversation about the CPA funding for the first time this year, at special town meeting, we actually used a borrowing option that's always been available to us for the CPA funds, because one of the strong arguments about the um, ask on behalf of the schools uh, was nobody wants to kind of blow all of the CPA funds, right? So people get nervous when they hear about a, a, a multi-million dollar ask out of CPA funding. Um, so I think, you know, just that one example alone, it, it's worth understanding what the options are, um, you know, so that as the conversation evolves, you can kind of keep it in a, in a box, if you will, and, and avoid some of this um, wild speculation that can go on when people are, are just left to their own devices. So again, I, I think what Denise pointed out is probably worthwhile. Any questions, thoughts? Can you go back and share what the base would be for stabilization? I know, Alan, I think you had mentioned that number earlier. It was pretty wide ranging. But for sort of basic stabilization of Russell School, what are we looking at? I have the DRA report here. And I was just looking at some of that stuff. And let me see. The initial figures that came out, and you have to add. Uh, uh, Alan will have the updated figures, but the initial figures, the battered granite walls, 103,000, the repoint the brickwork, 172,000, replace the slate roof with new slate, 348,000. Now, in my opinion, you're going to have to double every, th every one of those numbers to bring it up to date. So take that into consideration, but you're still within a million dollars to stabilize the building. by. DRA, stand, they're not the only people out there. The old Mohawk are professionals and they do this for a living. Look up old Mohawk, Google them, look at some of the beautiful work they do, and then decide whether you want them to work on that building. So, uh, to, to that answer the question though, I mean, do you want to know what kinds of work or how much? Mm -hmm. That's a good sense of what's, what's expected and roughly what the yeah. Well, we were talking about I mean, we know, we, I think we know what work should be done. The price tag, I mean, there's, there's an initial price tag that the RA laid out. That was updated in 2019. You could probably add 30% to that number. And that's what I did. And that's where I get $2 million. Yeah, so those numbers that Dan just said are from 2019. Yeah. Questions? Oop. Well, I want to say that um, that folks that aren't too keen about spending money on this building, we'd like to hear from you all too. We can hear you all. So, the question, the survey. Sorry, I keep saying questionnaire. The survey uh, gives you plenty of space to do that, and we'd like to hear from everybody. I, I think one argument, we'll see how this all plays out in the survey, but certainly um, Amherst is really getting a lesson as they think about building a new library <laughs> they think, or renovating the library. They think about some of their other buildings, a new school, and seeing the cost of these buildings just right. increase astronomically. Yeah. 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 And if, you, if we wait, it'll be yeah. even more. Yeah. It's, there are four projects in Amherst outstanding. The fire station, the DPW, which, I mean, that's the old rail, uh, um, what a trolley line. I used to work in that building. <laughs> and of course, this uh, school and the, and the uh, yeah, and the library, yeah. Should we schedule our next meeting? Um, we, we can, sure. While we're here. Okay, so if there's no more questions, we're going to schedule our next meeting.
Uh, any other? Uh, anybody else have one? Anything to add or ask while we're here? If just wanted just to thank all of you for your hard work on this. Thank you, Molly. Thanks, Molly. Thank you, Molly. Yes, Beth. I'll second that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 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 That, that's why. That's why I thought we could schedule it now, so people will know when the next time we're going to meet. We've been having it over at the library in that yeah. all-purpose room, and we also have it via Zoom if folks want to join mm -hmm. that way as well. Yeah. yeah. And we. Great. Um, okay. So when should yeah, please a... come? We've been meeting on mon Monday nights, uh, like once a month, I think. Every couple weeks. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have a holiday coming up, so. Holidays, so we can meet November 28th, we could meet December 5th. What works for folks? Either one is fine. I'm open on 28th. Me too. Okay, 28th. 28th. Is that a Monday? Yeah, it's two weeks from now. Sure. Okay, great. So 6 30 on Monday the 28th will be our next meeting. And Dan, you, you had mentioned about asking mass development to come. And I'm yeah, just, I don't. Is, did, did anybody see on Zoom if mass development showed up? I didn't no. see that. Do you think maybe we could ask them to come to the next meeting? Uh, we could. Yeah. Uh, mass development is a, uh, an outfit that sort of promotes, uh, they do a lot of promotion with reuse of historic buildings, and they, they their gear is to get them into the private sector, get them back on the tax roll, and get them used. Um, they help people get grants mass historic grants, oh, whatever grants, you know, it, but you know, they, they can certainly work with municipalities to get buildings rebuilt, but I don't know that, that that's their specialty. I think their specialty is more getting, you know, getting these municipal structures into private hands yep. and, and back up and, and running in that capacity. Mm -hmm. um, but they're totally welcome. To, to yeah, come. let's still invite them yeah. and then we can we can say that we've explored it. Sure. Yeah, and if they can't meet with us on the next meeting, maybe the one after that, but at least invite them to one of our meetings mm -hmm. so we can pick their brains. Right. And, and the other, I think another um, uh, person or, or group we might want to invite is the preservation circuit writer. Um, they, it's, it's a mass historical commission has, funds a preservation mm -hmm. Circuit rider to advise, you know, whatever municipalities or whoever are interested in preservation um, work, and they they might have they might have some good information about grants and and uh, funding, and I can I can do that. Great, thank you. Where is the next meeting? At the library, the public library. Yeah. At the library on the twenty eighth. Community, community room is that what it's Community called? room. On the twenty eighth at six thirty. You go on the twenty eighth. Turn left. Six thirty. Okay. Thanks. All right. Great. All right. Thank you so much.